Christ. Our relationship with Christ and with the church are relationships of love. Do you come to church to love? Or to gawk and see what everybody's wearing? Can you believe that? I remember that when I was a boy. Everybody had their little fill box hat. And they'd sit there, and one time a lady was sitting in front of me and had flowers all over her head. I thought I was going to be real nice. I was a little bitty girl. And I picked out those flowers and gave them to my mom. Yeah, mom. That lady in front of me turned around and looked at me. I don't think she knew I'd pulled them out of there. I thought she thought I was just playing with it. We do not choose those with whom we live and serve in the church. God puts us together. Because one thing about it with the church is that Betty Ann is going to have talent for something. Jay's going to have talent for something else. And we all are fitted together by those talents. Now, let me tell you a talent you got to have when you're a preacher. When you're in a Sunday school class, shut up. Because you have a tendency to try to show your, your knowledge. And you want to outdo whoever's teaching. Or they'll ask you that. What do you think, preacher? And they're expecting some kind of big, uh, you know, like 20, 20 volume uh, encyclopedia on, on uh, Jesus' sandals. You know, something weird like that. That's what they'll want. So you have to learn to keep your mouth shut. I learned that as a deacon and a Sunday school teacher. You know, somebody has to class, keep your mouth shut. Don't try to get things out there. Too much. Don't show yourself is what it is. What it is. Nevertheless, we are those whom we did not choose, even to the extent of laying down our lives for them. John 15, verses 12 and 13. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Even the answer to our prayers is contingent upon loving others. Therefore, let us love one another. You ever have one of those prayers? Man, I tell you what, I, can, I don't know what I'm going to do with Bo. I don't know what I'm going to do with him. Bo's just... So contrary all the time. Of course, that's a lie. You know, he's exactly the opposite of that. <laughs> so he's just so hard to deal with. You know, Lord, can you do something to him or for him or something there? Do something for me. What kind of prayer is that? Lord, change me. Lord, change me so I can deal with both. Give me the strength. Give me the patience. Give me whatever I need so that I can say I love you, Bo. And I do. I do. Or even John. Well, I'm real hard to get along with. I know that. Yes, he is. <laughs> your, your wife tells us that all the time. <laughs> uh, you're walking home today. I see that. Nah, I drove. <laughs> <laughs> no, somebody's walking home. I got friends. Yeah, I got, I got friends. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever gets home and locks the front door, that's who's the winner. <laughs> we don't lock it. That's our house. That's our house. Anybody comes in, all the babysitters and stuff, they just come in and walk in. Just come in, make yourself home. You're part of the family now. We're watching your kids. We're raising your kids. If they come home and they can't sit down for a little bit, you know why. But we are to love one another, and God is supposed to fit us together as a church, not dividing us. I do that better than you. 